This may be the absolute worst flat earth presentation in a debate ever. So here we go. Basically, well, how I understand it, globe theory has four mandatory conditionals, okay? The first of which being curvature. If the earth is a globe, then there would be some sort of shape. There would be some sort of globular shape that could be measured. And now that curvature rate, which uh, people can, you know, we could talk about for one mile, there should be 0.666 feet of curvature over one mile, okay? Over 10 miles, there should be 66.6 feet of curvature, okay, over 10 miles. Now, over 100 miles, there should be 6,669 feet of curvature, which we don't see. Well, if you watched the video while he was talking, I put up a couple different uh, observations of the curve, starting with the 1972 photograph of the Earth from 18,000 miles away, the uh, photograph or a still from a video of a rocket going to almost 300,000 feet using a rectilinear lens, and then finally a view of the salt flats in Utah showing the curve of the Earth as well. So you can actually see the curve of the Earth. Now he said there's no measurements, and of course he did not cite any measurements at all. I will cite some measurements. Jesse Kozlowski, a licensed surveyor, measured across a lake, lake being what flat earthers claim is flat. Uh, well, it's level, level is a curve, as he measured over 0 0.48 miles. If you use eight inches per mile squared, it predicts 0 0.15 feet of drop. And he measured 0 0.15 feet of drop. Then he did it again over 1.38 miles, and he the prediction is 1.27 feet of drop, and he measured 1.28 feet of drop. If you'd like to see a longer measurement, I got you covered. The Transcontinental Triangulation of the American Arc of the Parallel was a survey across the United States published in 1900, many years before NASA. So you can't complain about NASA. I'd like to point out a specific one between the two points, uh, two peaks of Ibapa and Tushar in the Rocky Mountains. This is because they are at almost the same elevation, a difference of 0.3% elevation, very slight difference in elevation. They are 128 miles apart. Now, using the standard eight inches per mile squared is not correct in this instance because they are far enough apart that the refraction of uh, in the air is a factor. So I will use the, the uh, coefficient of refraction measured by Gauss many years ago in Germany. That gives us seven inches per mile squared. Doing that, we predict an angular dip between those two peaks of 0 0.811 degrees. And the measured angular dip was from one side to the other 0 0.812 and the other direction, 0 0.819, spot on. So yes, we do in fact measure those, uh, that uh, dip. Now, when I see 666 all those times, you know what I think of? Now watch, I know you guys may not like the Bible, but how about uh, Iron Maiden? You know, let he who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. So basically, Satan put his signature on the globe theory, okay? Of course, he just manufactured all those 666s in there. He chose the particular distances so that he could come out with the number that he wanted. But in reality, 666 is not the number of Satan. It's the number of the beast. But who is the beast in Revelation? The beast is Nero. Emperor Nero. I'll put a link to Dan McClellan while he talks about this particular uh, issue from the Bible. He's a scholar and he knows what he's talking about here. Uh, I'll put that in the YouTube video description for you. Now, if the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, which no matter where you cut it, okay, no matter where you cut it, the earth is allegedly spinning a thousand miles an hour, right? Which we don't feel. No one can feel, okay? What part of the human anatomy can feel constant motion? The answer is none. We cannot feel speed. We can feel changes in speed. 
maybe some expensive little device that's designed to give you that result may feel it. But anything, no one, a plane hover or a helicopter hovering in place, the earth isn't moving, okay? If I jump in the air, okay? If I T jump in the air, right? One second, the earth would allegedly be spinning uh, so fast under me that 4.3 miles should be spinning underneath me, okay? No matter how you cut it. Yeah, he did. He did just say that. He thinks that uh, as soon as you jump off the earth, you instantly lose all the momentum that you had. He's completely unfamiliar with the conservation of momentum. His line of reasoning, if you're in an airplane going 500 miles an hour, if you jump up, you should slam against the back wall of that airplane. That's the exact same argument. He doesn't get it. This is not a debunk of the globe. This just shows that he can't understand the things that elementary school children do. No matter how much uh, fairy mathematics you lay on that, it is not happening, okay? And I know Globers might say, yeah, that's like half the speed of an hour hand on a clock, okay? Which is reasonable, right? However, theoretical globe Earth is much bigger than a clock, okay? What that means, it's more ground to cover in the same amount of time, okay? He did not, in fact, provide any measurements of stationariness, which would be what you'd need to do in order to establish that the Earth is stationary. All that he did was show that he doesn't understand momentum. So I will give you a few measurements of the rotation of the Earth. In, uh, on my website at mctune.net slash spin, I have a short list of them. There are a handful of different ones that show the measurement of the rotation of the Earth using optical gyroscopes, and then several different uh, measurements using other methods, like a suspending a plastic sphere using a magnet to measure its change in rotation as the Earth rotates, using a uh, liquid helium in a in a, a toroid to measure the amount of uh, rotation of the Earth, using a physical spinning gyroscope uh, and two large heavy spinning discs. To measure it. I'll uh, link that in the YouTube description for you. You can have fun uh, perusing them at your, at your leisure. Of course, this guy addresses exactly none of them, so didn't do anything to establish his belief that the Earth is stationary. Okay, the third one is tilt, okay? Allegedly on globe Earth, on the globe uh, theory, there is a 23.4 degree tilt back and forth, which is allegedly the reason for the seasons. But what I would like to demonstrate using a pair, because as we know, the high priest of uh, globe religion, Neil deGrasse Tyson, actually said Earth is pear-shaped, okay? I'm not putting words in his mouth, okay? Now watch. The reason there is no tilt, okay? Polaris would be directly above the north pole of this pear, right? Doesn't matter how far away it is. Polaris is directly above the North Pole of this pair. Now, not only Polaris doesn't tilt, but Orion, the constellations, the fixed stars do not tilt. Now, if, now this is the third mandatory conditional for the globe theory. Allegedly, the Earth tilts like this, with all of the stars tilting perfectly. Do you guys see what I'm saying? My hand represents the northern celestial hemisphere. I hope you guys are following what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be weird or throw some weird uh, stuff at you guys. But the reason we know there's no tilt, the sky, it's like this. The sky would stay put and the earth would tilt like that. But that's not what we see. Yeah, he really thinks that. He really thinks that there should be an annual tilt change, an annual wobble in the earth. He doesn't understand the globe. And he actually is out in public where people can see him. Highlighting his misunderstanding of the globe as if it's a debunk of the globe. Step one, understand the globe. You skipped that part. Here you go. I'll give you an example. Here's the Earth on its tilt. This is the tilt, right? Here's Australia. 
and this is Australian summer. The sun is uh, over the Tropic of Capricorn. So you get summer for, for Australia because the angle is very steep coming in nearly 90 degrees, right? Right over the Tropic of, of Capricorn it is. Then six months later, the earth is around uh, the other side and the sun's this direction. We can get Australia off here and you can see when it's over the Tropic of Cancer, it's it, this is the uh, the farthest it gets um, on, on that day. So Australia is far from from where the, the sun is, the, the, the point underneath the sun on the surface of the earth. But the whole time you see the earth is tilted that direction, North Star that way, six months later, North Star that way. We do not predict to see that the North Star changes its position dramatically like that throughout the, throughout the year. So the procession between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn of the globe, of, of where the sun is, is the evidence for tilt. If the earth was not tilted, then the, the sun would be over the equator all the time. But that's not what we observe. We observe an actual change, and that is because of the tilt. The fourth mandatory conditional for the globe theory to work, gravity. So that people could stand on the bottom of this pair. You see, and I'm not trying to uh, put words in your mouth or do, you know what I mean? This is what the globe theory is telling me. Since I've been a kid in school, this is what the globe theory has been telling me. People are standing on the bottom of this pair dancing, right? Gravity, right? Now, as I understand gravity, it is the greater the mass, the greater the force of attraction, right? This is what I've heard. You guys, I don't know if you guys still agree with it or not, but greater the mass, greater the force of attraction. The reason we know that isn't true is because if there was something that weighed 100 pounds and something that weighed one pound, if, if gravity were true, the heavier object having more mass would indeed fall faster. And he's debunked himself already right there. I suspect he thinks that pounds are a measure of mass. They're a measure of force. So an object with a small mass will have a small number of pounds of force. And an object with a large mass will have a large number of pounds of force. He, he <laughs> what, what does he think he's talking about? This is nonsense. It's so goofy that this guy is talking like, oh my God. <laughs> What's he doing? The other one that I know about gravity is mass attracting mass. Now, okay, we don't see that. When I look in the sky, I do not see the Ten moon seconds. being attracted. 10 seconds, I don't see the moon being attracted to the earth. I don't see the earth being attracted to the sun because there's no gravity. <laughs> he doesn't see the moon attracted to the earth. The moon's orbit around the Earth is due to gravity. It's an application of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Same thing for the Earth around the Sun. That's evidence for gravity, but he doesn't even understand this. He's debunked himself right there. Oh my gosh. Anyway, there's more to mass attracting mass. There are many experiments uh, with torsion bars and with uh, measuring uh, pendulums near mountains and uh, by putting... 13 tons of mercury in vats and finding out the difference in the acceleration uh, of objects in the above and below them. I'll link that a short list of those in the YouTube description as well. Um, I will be, I'm debating this guy here in a couple days. I will put a link to it. It's going to be on my channel as well as on modern day debate. The link to it will be in the description. So do join. If you're interested in watching this guy, try to, um, Try to prove that the Earth is flat somehow by not talking about flat Earth. I, I look forward to seeing you join along.